Yang, welcome to Delightful. I've got a lot of dolls. Some store-bought, many second-hand, some customized, others gifted from friends. But beneath all of that is the stock box. These are potential projects, the experiments, the work in progresses, the loose heads and parts, the, oh gosh, what even is this? So today I thought we'd try something random and fun. I'm going to select a doll that's been languishing in the stock box and turn her into something new. Let's make something of this Frankie Stein. If I recall correctly, I purchased her in a large used toy lot off of eBay. The joints and body itself look to be in great shape, but her forehead has some yellowed glue stains and the face is kind of dirty. Let's get started. Let's give her a brand new hair color and style. So to begin, snip off all the plugs close to the head. Now that she's got a buzz cut, we want to remove the head. Dunk her in hot water to soften the vinyl, and wait about 30 seconds until it's nice and squishy. Remove the doll and tug the head off the neck peg, using a cloth to shield your hand from the hot vinyl. Taking a long pair of needle-nosed pliers, scrape away and remove the remaining stubble from the inside of her head. Soon enough, the icky glue is gone and she's ready for the next step. Ugh, oh, that looks so nasty. Most of her factory paint is already gone, but we're going to pass over her face again and remove all the remaining smudges. Wipe the face down with warm soapy water afterwards to remove leftover acetone. That's looking much better. She's still got this yellow glue stained forehead thing going on, but you know how to fix that? With a well-placed hairstyle. About the hair, I've got a bunch of fun colors that we could work with. Hmm, maybe a two-tone style? All right, it's decided. We're going half lilac, half cherry pink. And with that decision comes another idea, to make the divide even more obvious by giving her two big ponytails. Prep the head by painting on each respective color, let that dry, and begin the rerouting process. With the hank laid out in front of you, peel away a couple hairs while holding down the rest. Loop it over your fingernail, insert the plug onto your tool, and poke it in the head. If you're delicate and occasionally comb the loose hank, you can utilize all of the hair. I've had some people tell me that the last hairs of their hank become a tangled and unmanageable mess by the end. So try to keep a clear workspace and peel away each plug completely so that you don't waste materials. I can already tell that I'm not going to have enough hair to fill in this space, so we're going to have to get creative. The most important areas to plug on a doll are around the hairline and the part, because that's what shows. So I'm going to use up the rest along the part. For the inner section, I'll have to use this white as a filler. I hope this looks good in the end. You'd be surprised how much of doll customizing consists of being flexible and working with what you've got. In fact, I'm so short on this pink color, I'm going to preemptively cut off the hair where the bangs are going to be, and use that hair again to further fill in the bangs. Waste not, want not. So it's the same story on the left side of her head. I had enough lilac for the hairline and part, but filled in the rest with white. I tried to keep all the sections separated via twist ties and rubber bands. To secure all that loose hair, shove the nozzle down in there and squeeze Fabri-Tac glue over the plugs on the inside. Feel around the outside with your thumb to make sure you're hitting the right spots. Also, Fabri-Tac glue gets sluggish in cold weather, so warm it up ahead of time by sitting on it or something. Set the head aside upside down to dry. Let's turn to making the clothes. I'll be using a pattern that's an old favorite of mine, which you may recognize as Minnie Catherine's main outfit. You may be happy to hear that I received a wonderful scanner printer for Christmas, so I'm out of excuses for turning my patterns into digitals for sale. As a New Year's resolution, I would like to get at least a handful up and available for you. Of course, that's going to be a lot of work, scanning and organizing, streamlining the directions, making sure they print on the correct sizes for both A4 and American Standard paper size. It'll be worth it, though. This little skirt wasn't nearly poofy enough, so I tried again with about three times the ruffles. See, it's stuff like that I want to make sure is ironed out by the time I sell the patterns. With the basic outfit made, we can jazz it up with details. I'll be hand stitching these tiny beads around the neck ruffle to be fancy. Unfortunately, the needle is too large to pass through the bead, so I have to take it off, string the bead, and then re-thread the needle each time.
I've attached a bow to the asymmetrical turn of the skirt, but the ruffles are trying to bounce up and out, even after I ironed them flat. So to force them to lie down, hide several well-placed stitches to the underside of the ruffle to make them artificially behave. That's pretty cute! Makes me want to spice up my own doll's outfit. I'm still in a winter mood, so let's give her boots. After creating a paper mache cast of Frankie's feet, cut them apart from the back. It took a great deal of yanking to get these off, so it seems I made them too tight. So I've opened them up wider along the cut, and I'm going to add another quick layer of paper and glue to patch this area. Just like that. Using hot glue, I tack on a small square of fabric at the toe and center. Then paint on a length of glue around the back and roll the fabric down on top. It worked for Yulia's shoes, so once again, cut a triangle out of craft foam to act as the heel and glue it to the sole. Build up and sculpt the heel's shape with more hot glue. To match her neckline, I gathered more white ruffles and glued them around the top of the shoe. In keeping with the pastel color palette, I'll be painting the heels gray. With some more fancy beading, her Lolita boots are done. The heels do look a little janky. I think this worked on Yulia's black heels, but the imperfections show up with the light gray color. I may have sacrificed artistry for time on this one. Switching back to her head, it's time for her face. Mask off the hair and spray her with sealant. I use Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat. As always, the materials I use in this video will be listed below in the description. I'm going into this with no plan. All I know is that I want to use the same colors that are in her hair. I apply pastel to her lips and around the eye molding. Clean up and shape the area around the lips with a kneaded eraser. Next, lay down your basic line work. By this point, I decided that I would follow my heart and make a full-out sparkle-tastic kawaii aesthetic kind of face. You guys know I can only hold the floodgates closed for so long before my sweet Lolita style preference explodes out like a waterfall. So I've drawn on large round eyes with a heavy eyelid and an extra wrinkle detail near the eyebrows there. I fill in the eyebrows and pupils with magenta pastel. I wanted to whiten the eyes, so I'm going in with my white pencil, but what's actually happening is I'm scraping away the purple layer and the green skin is showing through. For the first time in ages, I'm having trouble with my sealant. It's a brand new can and I gave her two solid layers, but nothing seems to be building and for some reason it's making her kind of shiny. This is ironic because just last video I said, I usually just have at it and hope for the best. And it tends to work out for me, maybe I just luck out. So what's going on? It's because I got cocky and talked about it, isn't it? So, fully on the sealant, let's switch to acrylic paint. Here's a tip I've been meaning to share with you. This makes acrylics stay wet ten times longer on the palette than they usually would. Lay down two layers of paper towel, wet them, and place a layer of thin vinyl on top. This makes acrylics so much more manageable, and I learned this from a college professor, so if you're watching, thanks Brenda's! First I paint on the whites of the eyes. Then darken the lash line with purple and build up the waterline with a soft pink. Next I fill in the pupil color and define the line in between the lips. I also brighten the lip color. It looks kind of bad right now, but it works out in the end. My brush game has been a little wonky and heavy-handed these days, so I'm trying to redeem myself with some tiny, delicate lines by using my tiniest, most delicate brush. I thought a sunset-like gradient would look pretty in her eyes, and as I was applying the color, a thought occurred to me. Is it possible to marble acrylic in the pupils? It's a pretty small space, but I thought I'd give it a shot. I added a bead of water to the pupil, then dropped in watered-down acrylic colors. 
I blobbed dark purple on the top and pink on the bottom and then swirled the two together. It didn't work as well as I hoped, so I kept trying until I got something like this. I definitely want to revisit this idea, perhaps on a bigger doll, because I feel like it's got a lot of potential. And it's fun! To beef up the sparkles, we're busting out the pink and purple micro glitter. I'm dabbing them on their respective acrylic colors while the eyes are still wet. Let's put some on the lips too. Sure, why not? Let's go for a star this time around with the eye shines. Oh, I didn't mean to, but that long shine kind of makes it look like a shooting star. Lastly, a couple of white freckles to balance the face. I love freckles on dolls. And although I didn't have a lot of faith in it, I gave her a final spray with Mr. Super Clear before painting on the glossy texture. Now to be freed from the head burrito. Aw, oh, I already love the way it matches her hair colors. I'm so excited to style her hair. Here's hoping we can get the bangs to lay back down. It's no secret that I've been really inspired by Moonlight Jewel lately. And while I was sewing the clothes, I thought it would be cute to make this custom a sweet Lolita too, like a sister doll to Charlotte here. So in a similar fashion, I'm giving my doll two big ponytails and mushed her bangs back in place with a twist tie. Use straws, bobby pins, and tin foil to prepare the hair for styling. Rust from the bobby pins has stained my doll's hair in the past, so to prevent this, I'm slipping a thin strip of tin foil underneath the pin so that it's shielded from the hair. And I don't much notice, but fashion experts will tell you to curl in the direction away from the face, so that's what I'm gonna do. Once everything is in place, pour boiling water over the doll's hair. Then immediately pour cold water. The temperature difference will set the hair. Apparently I didn't film this part, so here's a clip. I let my doll dry overnight, but she was still damp in the morning, so I'm moving things along with a hair dryer. To make styling easier, let's pop her body back on. There we go. If you've ever tried to style a doll's hair, you know how eager they are to flop around and fall over. So go outside, get yourself a nice rock, and now she'll stay put! Anyway, now we can remove the straws. Remove the pins, then slip the straw out. And when you're done, recollect those tools and use them again next time. Time for the bangs. I tend to have trouble with bangs. I picked up a pair of hair scissors that don't slip when you're cutting, which is nice. So to start, I make a blunt cut across, then fine tune it from there. Oh yeah, and don't forget to split the curls. This will volumize the poofiness and make the hair look full and luscious. Yeah, so many curls! Let's play dress up. You can see I also gave her a headband similar to Charlotte's, constructed out of some cereal box cardboard, two ribbons to tie behind the head, and of course plenty of ginormous bows. She still feels unfinished and plain, so I've gathered bits and bobbles of sweets related beads and charms that we can hopefully put to use. And she's done! Because my first Sweet Salulita doll is named Cupcake, I thought I'd keep with the pastry theme and name this doll Macaroon. I had such a good time making this doll. Creating a doll from concept art is just as fun, but it's nice to mix it up and create a doll on the spot, too. I was thinking of making this a series, something like the Stock Box series, where we grab a random doll and make something new with her. Does that sound like fun? For more crowd participation, I thought you guys could vote on the general theme of the next doll by clicking that eye icon in the top right corner. If I can get that feature to work. I've never used it before, to be honest. All three of these sugary girls together is almost too much for me to handle, so I better end this video before I explode. Be sure to see Moonlight Jewel's video about making Charlotte there, and like and subscribe for more fun customs! Stay artsy! Annyeong!
しプー